In accordance with the provisions allowed by Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, the April 26, 2022 public meeting of the Master Plan Implementation Committee will be held remotely. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to facebook.com backslash LakeCam. You do not need a Facebook account to view this meeting. This meeting will be recorded and available to be viewed at a later date at LakeCam.tv. So we have six agenda items. First one is review and vote to approve the meeting minutes. But before we even get there, we have got to do attendance. So Rodney Dixon. Rita Gobbett. Joseph Chamberlain. Ari Skye. All right, great. And we have a guest this evening and uh, Mr. Mark Resnick, town okay. planner. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving forward, we're going to review uh, and vote to approve the meeting minutes for February 15th of 2022. We're going to review and discuss the following warrant articles for the annual town meeting scheduled for May 16th, 2022. That's Article 7, the amendment to zoning bylaw adding open space residential development. Article 8, amendment to the zoning bylaw sign regulations. And Article Number 9, amendment to zoning bylaw site plan review. Then we're going to schedule our next meeting. I ask for new business and then old business and then any other business that may properly come before the meeting. So we'll start off with agenda item one to review and vote to approve the meeting minutes for February 15th. Motion to approve minutes for February 15th, 2022. Second, All right. Do Here, we two wanna... seconds. Yeah. All right, excellent. So all in favor, aye. Rodney Dixon, aye. Rita Gabbard, aye. Jane Belaine, aye. Ari Sky, aye. Awesome. All right. Motion uh, to approve is unanimous. Thank you. So ag agenda item number two, review and discuss the following warrant articles for the annual town meeting scheduled for May 16th. This is going to be the, obviously, the body of this meeting. Uh, we've had a lot of changes since we met last, um, obviously the Warren articles came out, CPA passed, and also there's a lot of discussion about the Lakeville Country Club. So- Sorry if, about being late. Nope, it's, so, it's all good. So we have, have us uh, joining us right now is uh, Mr. Jack Lynch, thank you. Appreciate it. So Jack, we just talked, we just uh, took roll call. We just uh, mentioned the agenda. <clears throat> Excuse me. We just approved the meeting minutes, and now we're on to uh, agenda item number two, which is to review and discuss the following warrant articles for the annual town meeting scheduled for May sixteenth, of twenty twenty two. Item one uh, within that is article number seven, the amendment to the zoning bylaw adding open space residential development. So. What would we like to do um, in regards to the warrant? Do we want to read it? Do we want to summarize it? Does someone want to take the lead and discuss it? What would we like to do? I well, think I summary like would, would work well. Sorry? Summary would work well. Yeah. I would suggest that we have Mark um, provide an overview of, of the articles individually. Is, that, is everyone in agreement with that? Yes. Let's yes. make Mark earn his living here. Okay. <laughs> so I'd like to turn it over to uh, Mr. Mark Resnick, the Lakeville uh, Town Planner. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay. So the open space residential development is something that was uh, recommended in the master plan, something the planning board's worked on since I arrived in January. Uh, it is... Um, uh, basically a bylaw that allows the planning board to um, review a subdivision um, under this section of the bylaw as um, that that allows for a reduction in lot size so that you can create open space land whether it's for conservation purposes or recreation purposes um, and, and so that you have less road construction, less land alteration, and, um, and, uh, but you end up with um, the same number of lots. So that's always something of confusion. 
Um, there is no increase in the number of house lots. There's just a reduction of the size. So you're trying to create more of a neighborhood with a, a cluster of homes that are closer together um, and, uh, and create some open space. Some of the setbacks are slightly uh, adjusted in, um, in the bylaw, um, but uh, the planning board has um, a little more, a lot more discretion in reviewing uh, the, the subdivision layout um, and attaching conditions because it is a special permit. Uh, it is a two-step process. So someone must submit a standard preliminary subdivision plan with enough information so the board can make a determination that that subdivision plan could be approved. So let's say a piece of land can support 20 house lots. They have to su uh, submit a plan that can the board can um, accept as a pl proper preliminary plan. Then they, uh, in conjunction with that preliminary plan, they submit a um, concept plan for the open space development. And the planning board evaluates that in, in compliance for compliance with this section for the open space plan and also evaluates the quality of the open space and what it's gonna be used for. Um, and then if the, those two plans receive approval, then they're allowed to file for their special permit and definitive subdivision plan. And so that, once that gets reviewed, so then, then that becomes actually a rather more rapid review because you've already gone through the first. It's more of a technical review of drainage alterations, you know, the construction details on the roadway and so that, that type of thing. And then, um, you know, if they've met all the standards, um, the board would approve the special permit and the subdivision um, at the same time. Mark? Yes? Is it the intent that the roads uh, would be accepted as town ways, right? So the developer? Um, that is a possibility. We don't require that they be yeah. public or private. What we do require is that the land become public. So okay. the open space land. Um, and that, it, let's say it is a private way that the, um, the community would have the right to the way, to use the way to get access, uh, that there, there is public access. Let's say the land is in the back corner, you know, we would ensure that there's public access, uh, public parking so that uh, people can utilize the uh, property. Again, if it's a small subdivision, we don't have any requirements we may, um, on, on uh, minimum size. Uh, we may not want to involve parking, but we still would want to make sure that there's public access. So, so. And, and uh, Mark, this is Rodney. So the yep. question about is it, would it be in perpetuity? Yes. Yes, it would. All right. Thank you. Okay. Because then I. <laughs> All right. I think what is good when uh, open space development or cluster developments first came out, um, towns had a lot of problem that what was left as open space wasn't really useful. So it wasn't mm -hmm. real popular in the beginning, but I think um, the bylaws have come a long way since then. Yeah, uh, when I was in Foxborough, um, we probably did at least one a year in Foxborough mm -hmm. on average, um, and uh, they worked out quite well. So mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. uh, some areas, uh, we were able to link open space from one to another to another. In other areas, we were able to add to existing conservation land by having a cluster development nearby, and then the remainder of the land would be you know, uh, attached to the conservation land, so. Okay. Thank you very much. Joe? Do Question. we have any discussion? Question for Mark? Yep. Um, any, any, you say no problems. So there haven't been problems with people, you know, late night partying on, on the public land or anything like that, or parking out in the streets or 
you know, trash in open space, anything like that, the neighbors must probably keep a pretty good eye out, right? Right. Well, I mean, you have people living right there. I okay. mean, it's, it's really a benefit for the neighbors. They use it for walking their dogs. They use yep. it for, you know, cutting over to a friend's house. Um, you know, it's, it's um, you know, becomes a community space in some, some ways. That's yeah, so. the whole thing of creating a neighborhood. Right. And from a, a conservation viewpoint, you're not putting in any more houses than you normally would be able to. And typically those houses are likely to be smaller, right? Oftentimes they are. Again, it, it kind of depends on the developer and what they're used to building. Um, I've had a um, very high-end developer in Foxborough who would build the really McMansion type homes. Yeah. They were still a bit larger than other homes, but they, they scaled them down a little bit. Um, you know, when he, he did want to do one of these types of developments and it came out quite nice. So, um, all in all, a positive experience for the town. Yes, absolutely. Good. Excellent. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, living in, I live in LeBaron Hills Country Club, and I can only speak for the public areas we have here and the open spaces we have here. I think uh, it's worked very well. Um, I can't speak to the continued development that uh, the owners are doing uh, here where they're putting in now we have townhouses and we have uh, more expensive single family homes but we have uh, I, in my opinion and maybe not in other people's opinion but a decent amount of public uh, open space and it is an extremely quiet community and uh, everybody is very cognizant of what goes on here and as far as I can see, having been here almost two years, there is no abuse of any of the lands around here. Good. That's good to hear. Thank you for that. Okay, moving forward, uh, Article 8, Amendment to the Zoning Bylaw Sign Regulations. Um, so the sign regulations um, have been, um, uh, uh, pretty much rewritten. We we did keep some sections uh, within the, the sign bylaw, uh, but we added definitions that did not exist uh, prior. So the whole addition to section 2.0 is all uh, new, uh, as well as we actually um, put in um, permit requirements and some um, uh, some some other procedural requirements that were not also in the general bylaw. Uh, the other thing we did is um, certain types of signs, um, such as electronic message boards, uh, changeable copy signs, internally illuminated signs, were really uh, unregulated, and the board felt that we should still allow some of those, but we are, uh, they wanted to restrict the sizes a little more. And then um, some of the other sign types, um, they added some other dimensional requirements. And the, um, one of the, the other thing they did is um, uh, they set some limitations. The, the, the bylaw allows the zoning board to, um, uh, to grant a special permit for, for certain size signs being larger than permitted and um, higher than permitted. So the planning board set some, some limitations on, on what the zoning board can do. So they, there's still some flexibility within the sign bylaw uh, so that under certain circumstances, a business owner can request uh, additional signs, bigger signs, higher signs but uh, there's, there's some limitations on that, that that didn't exist before. Rodney, you know, I, you know, I add uh, to some of Mark's comments. In the planning board, Mark, as you recall, we talked about dominoes and the uh, entry signs and the exit signs and the size of the signs and the, and the color of the signs and white on black and white on blue and all of this. So we spent a good bit of time talking about that kind of signage 
in making sure that we were all satisfied with that and that we would better control uh, the color and the size of the signing. So it just, you know, there's a lot of talk about the Dollar Tree store and Walgreens. And so I, I think, you know, with, uh, with, with Mark's expertise, we've, we've uh, improved the, the signage uh, uh, designs much better than it has been in the past. Great, thank you. Okay. And then moving forward, is there any other discussion on Article 8? Okay. Moving forward to Article 9, Amendment to the Zoning Bylaw Site Plan Review. So the site plan review bylaw is a completely rewritten bylaw. We did have site plan review in the past, uh, but it was um, didn't have a lot of procedural and uh, efforts, and it did require, you know, a fairly substantial submission. But um, there wasn't a lot of design standards that had to be met, or um, architectural standards that had to be met, and. A, Apparently that was quite a controversial um, uh, couple projects such as you had mentioned the Dollar Tree before um, that it architecturally wasn't very palatable, let's say. Um, it's pretty standard block building. So, um, so when we rewrote the, the sign bylaw, uh, we added in some additional procedural act, act, aspects. Um, and uh, we did um, add that it also applied to any multifamily, so three units or more, which typically we don't allow multifamily develop, uh, buildings in the community, but um, it is a way of, if we, we do actually allow it in the state, in the overlay district for the state hospital, and we also, might, um, as we move forward with MBTA zoning for um, uh, commuter rail communities, we may allow it in the future as well. So um, at least in a small designated area. So we felt it was important to include that as well. Um, the submittal requirements are basically the same. And um, as, as is um, the procedure, although we refine that a little bit about rec when requiring hearings and, and so forth. Uh, we did, like I said, add specific performance standards and some basic architectural standards so that the board can uh, ask for certain things and, and see more detail on, um, on building design. And then we also added uh, at the end a section on uh, specifically for just, you know, uh, aligning decisions, inspections, fees, and um, appeals. And there was none of that procedural for part of the, um, of the uh, bylaw before, so. Appreciate that. You had mentioned the MBTA uh, commuter uh, area, is that? specifically that's the half mile zone from the MBT. Is that what you reference? That's correct. All right. And um, just to reiterate, um, this is my opinion. We spoke about this in the past multiple times uh, with regards to high density housing within that area and potentially um, in other locations uh, during our meeting with the select board quite a while ago when we had uh, Senator Roderick's there, and there was a comment made about high density housing. And the comment I made roughly was that high density housing is incompatible with our vision as a town and also the master plan. So I want to just be on record for that, that uh, you know, through these uh, workshops that we've had over the last several years and in multiple meetings that it's, it may be what the governor wants, uh, but the governor doesn't live in Lakeville. And so, you know, to that end, uh, you know, the citizens of Lakeville, at least I've spoken with, have been very vocal about um, high density housing. So I just want to be on the record again to, to reiterate that. Yes, Mr. Chamberlain. Today's Boston Globe had a lengthy article basically on that same topic. We aren't the only town that are pushing back on the state on this, this obsession to put in high density in towns near 
the MBTA stations? Mr. Chairman, I, I um, was actually about to say something very similar. Um, the just for for just for the committee's information, um, the MMA and the MMLA, which is the Massachusetts Municipal Legal Association, I guess, um, signed, sent a joint letter to the um, to the uh, state uh, DHCD re uh, expressing a number of concerns with the nature of the MBTA community's rules and what it looks like. Be, be, the, 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 the largest concern so from a meta standpoint is that it's more kind of prohibitive and um, what's the word, um, you know, uh, so forcing as opposed to incentivizing right. and uh, penalizing, thank you. And, um, and th that the, uh, there are a number of concerns I'd be, I'd be happy to pass this on to the committee, the letter at some point that I can do that in the morning. Yeah, um, but the, the yeah, but but um, uh, I happen to be on the committee on an MMA that that ha that handles those issues. I'm on the municipal administration committee, and um, it's been a, a topic of conversation pretty much at every meeting. So we were we are we are fighting the fight. Right, and in you know whatever you can do is greatly appreciated, but ultimately it's going to be up to uh, you know the citizens that uh, to exercise right. their right and to push back and. There may be financial consequences to the action, uh, but we have to preserve Lakeville for, for the future. Rodney so, and Ari, isn't, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't uh, one of the issues is that late, now that the, the station is being moved to Middleborough, are we still designated as a commuter rail community town? Yes. 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 Yeah, we would still be considered a commuter rail community uh, because it is within a half mile of the town line. Um, I have asked a specific question to the state about whether we would still do the half mile radius from our train station because that station is not going to go away. It'll probably still be used for the summertime Um train and who knows whether there'll be a permanent future extension that way or you know um so um i have asked that question i have not gotten an answer i've also filed um with the state uh we had to make a filing um uh, by the middle of march uh, may um to, to continue to be eligible for grants for the next 18 months until we have to have the zoning in place. And based on my reading of the zoning that we have around the, um, the train station, we have about 35 acres already zoned appropriately for um, high density housing. However, the state needs to review that and determine whether that uh, zoning that was adopted for that district is sufficient. So we may already be more than halfway there as far as our, our zoning requirements. So um, again, it's, it's all kind of in the hands of the state, but they still haven't finalized those um, uh, regulations that, that were sent out as a draft in, the, in December, so. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Go ahead, Rita. Uh, one item that I think people might be concerned with uh, when our design uh, standards, we talked about that. People were uh, worried that it, it would affect residential dwellings. And under section 6.7.3, number six, it does talk about uh, new construction on residential if you disturb more than 43,560 square feet. But I think that's in there because isn't that required by DEP, our stormwater management? Um, so that's a pretty big disturbing. Uh, that's an anchor. Yeah, I, I thought it was, Joe. Yeah. Yes. So you'd actually have to disturb an acre of land. Um, and I, I just point that out as concern that people might be worried that now we're going to tell people how to design their residential home. Uh, no, that is um, so that's that section that talks about land alteration of greater than an acre is yeah. already in the town's bylaw. Right, right. Uh, so that's that's already something that's uh, been applied before. Right. So um, that does not affect. Um, home design, what it affects is 
for example, um, there was a, there's currently uh, several Form A lots that were cleared, and then they were Form A, but the entire area was cleared, and there was no drainage, and there was impacts to the neighborhood. So uh, this was before I got here about a year ago. Nate Darling required that they um, come in for site plan review, and um, there was some a plan was prepared and. Um, you know, is, is um, currently the homes are under construction, so. Okay. Now, I just wanted to point that out in case anyone right. worried that uh, that was going to be a concern. Mm -hmm. But I'm just thrilled that these three bylaws are like three of our priorities that we've been right. working mm -hmm. on for 15 years. I know, and I know Nate wanted this uh, signed bylaw redone, so. Um, it's on for town meeting. Right. Well, kudos, kudos to the committees and, and the, um, yeah, and those involved in getting the pages and now it's up to the, you know, to the, to the citizens to, to vote in May. So yeah, that's excellent news. Um, so moving forward, um, uh, again, I, I'm thrilled just having the opportunity to, to be on this committee and to see in the time that at least I've been on this committee, um, you know, the progress that we've made and, and now other committees are really, really doing the yeoman's work, you know, to make things happen. So hopefully the citizens will see it and uh, they'll agree and, and they'll vote in the, in the affirmative, so. Mr. Chairman, you know, uh, you know, having been on the planning board now for a year and a half and then with Mark coming on board, I mean, I think just since Mark's been on board with his unbelievable amount of knowledge about this, all this information, he's really been able to put the ball over the goal line. It's just been, it's, I think, you know, and I'm not, you know, here to, you know, overly pat Mark on the back, but he's, you know, he has a tremendous amount of, of knowledge and he's been able to help us really push this ball fairly quickly over the, uh, over the goal line, where in Pat, in all due respect to Mark and everybody else, it was seen to be a little bit of a struggle, but it, I think it's worked very well in a very short period of time. So kudos to Mark. It's awesome, yes. 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 Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. So May 16th at 6.30 is the special town meeting and seven o'clock is the annual town meeting. So hopefully the committee, all the members will go. I will be there, I'll tell you that. All right. And the, right. hearing, the hearings for these articles are Thursday night, Mark? No. Uh, so there was a little confusion about the meeting room space. So it was advertised originally for uh, uh, April 28th, but we have re-advertised those for okay. May 12th. Okay. So it'll be Thursday, May 12th. Okay. Very good. Any other discussion or observations, comments? Okay, thank you very much for your time. We greatly appreciate it. It's very informative. All right, thank well, you. If You're... I may, um, yes, Rita. after town meeting is all over and all of that and we meet again, I guess we'll pick our next priorities. Uh, we'll let Mark know if he's involved in any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give you a little breathing room. Okay. A little. Yeah, Just that would be yeah because I still have things on your on the in the master plan to work on. Um, I'm as sure well I will. as, as yeah. well as you know other projects. Now that I've been here for a few months, um, there's a, a variety of other uh, priorities that are coming right. up. So, well, we appreciate it very much. You're a great part of the team, and I, I think. Uh, we're, we're lucky to have you and we greatly yeah. appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so let's, speaking of a uh, good segue uh, about our next meeting date, when would we like to meet next? I have one Hi. suggestion, just a brief one. Um, so this is more no, a no later than date as opposed to a, a no earlier than date. Yeah. Um, and th that's, uh, I think this is a useful exercise to have to be able to brief all of you on um, the items coming before town meeting and there, there will be a 
there'll be some more, there will be some more zoning articles for, um, for fall. We, Mark and I have already talked about a few of those. You may have heard the planning board is pushing through some changes to the DOD, some talk about that. Um, we have some clarifications we need to do on the membership of the CPC. That one's, uh, that one could be a, a minor one or it could be a big one. I'm not sure how it's, what it's gonna look like yet. Um, and there are probably some others that I haven't thought of yet. So I think, you know, it would be, it's a really helpful exercise to have the MPIC have consider just get a sense of those in preparation of town meeting. So, you know, I'm not saying we should wait until August or September to meet. I'm just saying, I don't want to leave me later than that. Um, and, um, and then, you know, there, there may be some, you may, you may want to meet a little earlier than that, just to kind of, you know, as you said, go through this exercise of determining what our next priorities are going to be. I think, uh, you know, we've been pretty consistent with meeting monthly uh, in, in stretching it out um, as needed like this, you know, not having the uh, the meeting last month, but having it in February and waiting until after the CPA and the election and, and some other uh, things. I think in light of some of the events like the CPA, as an example, um, the Lakeville Country Club, that's, that's, a, that's a very big issue right now. Um, that a lot of people are talking about and the, and the impact to the town, but ultimately the CPA, which is part of our, you know, master plan, we had mentioned it before, we have to adjust the master plan now that it's passed. Um, and then uh, we, we really have to take a look at adjusting the plan if, uh, you know, if Lakeville Country Club moves forward with the, with the PNS and then if it's developed. And um, so that's, that's something I would like to strike where the iron is hot. Um, I would like to meet if possible every month if that it's if it's value added. Um, if we feel after the May meet or we can actually go into June because of the, the meeting is in middle of May, yeah. unless we would like to have a meeting. Um, so I'd like to see June only because after the after May 16th and a couple of weeks later we've got you know we've got Memorial Day and the holidays coming and so um, I don't know what are your thoughts. So you're going to have, so we have, May is obviously a blockbuster month for, for us. Um, right. So, I mean, I, I would probably agree that the, the moving, that doing it in June makes a little sense. Um, one thing to be aware of in terms of timing is that the, if the right of first refusal passes at town meeting, then the special election will be June 28th. Okay. Could you so, do me a favor? Can I just stop you there for one for yeah. one quick second? For for the viewers at home or any anybody that's going to view this at a later time, could you just take a step back and just give a give a uh, just a, a broad overview of what we're talking about the Lakeville Country Club and oh and boy, about the, <laughs> can I? I know, I know it's loaded, and I try to keep my meeting short. If you could just you know in in the sure. interest of time, uh, just to educate the you know the people at home that what we're talking about. Happy to, yeah. So um, the uh, the Lakeville Country Club, which is about 145 acres altogether, um, has there's a purchase in, is that, well part of most of it is in 61B chapter land, which means it's considered recreational space. A small portion of it is also a 61A, which is open space. There has been a purchase and sale agreement signed by the owner with a developer. Um, to sell the property for about 13.6 million, 13.7 million. They're actually selling for 15 if they include the non-chapter lands. Um, the, the town under state law has a right of first refusal within 120 days to, um, to, to, to buy the property. You have to pay the number being, it, you can't do economic damage to the person selling it. So you, have to, you have to give them the money that they were gonna get in the PNS. So the question coming before a town meeting is going to be whether the town is interested in purchasing this property for 13.7 million, 3.6 million, I'm sorry. And, um, and uh, if doing so, because that is a number that's about, close to about 40% of our operating budget, um, right. it would have to be a debt exclusion, uh, Proposition two, over, 2 and a half override, which, um, which means that the town meeting would have to vote two thirds to approve the, uh, the article, and then there'd have to be a special election. Um, the, the time is very tight. The, uh, the deadline for going for, for exercising the right of first refusal is July 2nd. Um, you have, and you have to have and the, the minimum amount of time between uh, the passage of an article and election is 45 days. So June 28th is the date um, for various reasons, timing wise, also some 
some um, practicality in terms of when when the Loom Pond Lodge is available. So the um, so you know it'd be possible just barely to get this done. Um, and so that that's that's the question that the select board the select board has the ability on its own to decide whether or not to do this, um, but does not have the ability to raise thirteen million dollars and. Um, the, the board members felt very strongly that um, this is an issue that really should be put to the town. Um, the scale of it. So, yeah, so we have a couple. I'm, I'm getting hey, feedback. Um, For me? No, it's. I'm not sure who it is, but I, it was sorry. me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. It's me. Don't I let mean, it happen I, again. I won't. <laughs> I won't. I guess, Roddy. You know, Ari. One question. I mean, I guess one comment I'd make. In so doing, if 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 the town were to buy the, the property, it would cost the taxpayers, the median taxpayers, uh, the median taxpayer, two hundred twenty-five dollars a month for twenty years. Am I correct? So I mean, twenty-five dollars a year, a year, a year, a year. Um, a year. I'm sorry. And, and year. yeah, for twenty there, years. There are a lot of, you know, to, to coin a phrase from a uh, uh, defense secretary of times past. There are a number of known unknowns here. Oh. <laughs> um, the uh, first of all, um, and we'll we'll discuss, mention this at town meeting. I have no problem talking about it. Um, first of all, there's a covenant um, in place which requires the uh, property to be operated as a golf course. Mm -hmm. And if um, if the town were to decide no longer to operate as a golf course, then we'd have to pay the seller, the current owner, a million dollars in addition. One, two, there um, the uh, the PNS makes it very clear uh, has a has a has a uh, that the that the sale is the land only and does not include any of the property, any of the personal property equipment, mowing machines, and like that associated with the the um, associated with the the, the golf course, um, nor any of the structures or improvements. But we're not sure how that exactly works. How you haul away a golf, you know, a clubhouse. Um, but but the uh, the seller would have every right to tear that thing down um, and tear up the roads if he wanted to as well. Um, so so that's that's another big you know question we have. Um, we don't really have a, because there's been no master plan done on this property and no clear work done in terms of its targeting as an acquisition or anything like that. We don't really have clear eyes on what it would cost to operate the site as a golf course, nor what it would cost to operate it, to maintain it just as a basic park. Um, we're working on those numbers now, trying to get something together, but obviously it's going to be a bit of a swag given the timing. Right. Um, so I know, um, Rita's got a question, then I've got a question. So go ahead, Rita. Well, I know CPA doesn't take effect until July 1, correct? Correct. So, and I forget how much money we would be raising between the state re, uh, match and what the town. Well, the first match doesn't come until the fall of 2023. Because the so, match is, the match, hold on, let me finish. The match, the match is, is, is paid based on the, on the prior year's revenue. So we will not get a match yeah. until a year and a half from now. But going um, forward, but, say if the, uh, the taxpayers had to pay the first year on the debt service, going forward oh, after 2023, can we earmark the CPA money? to? Wouldn't come close, it? wouldn't come close. Okay. CPA total is estimated at about $300,000. With the match, that's what the board of assessors well, estimate was, it was last year. Three three thirty eight, three thirty eight. Okay. Um, now, of course, that could change depending on what the match looks like a year and a half from now. We have no idea what the match for FY twenty four is going to look like right now because right. it changes based on the amount of recordation tax revenue that goes into the state. And we'll, you know, if the economy goes down, that match is going to go down. So we, we don't know. But yeah. but the 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 um, see, also. Bear, bear in mind that when it comes to the CPA, you have the ability to issue debt, but um, that debt um, is limited in terms of how much you can issue um, right. of the total because there's a carve out, there's a 10% has to go towards open, right. towards yeah. um, a certain preservation, 10% you know, towards housing, so on and so on. 60% could go to, right. Yeah, and that would be it. That'd be the one thing you do with After CPA for the next 20 years. I guess, yeah. yeah that would be the one thing you would do with CPA for the next 20 years, that'd be it. Right. But right. The only well, thing then, you do is CPA. Yeah, exactly. So then, then you know, the, you're exactly right. So the premise of the CPA, as presented and passed, was we can do multiple projects. This would pigeonhole one project for 20 right. years. Um, financially, financially, my concern is 
Uh, I know there's a lot of talk about capital improvements. Uh, there's also talk about a debt exclusion potentially for a new fire station. Yep. And other. Yep. Uh, I read on the article earlier, there is a, um, uh, on the warrant, there's a $40,000 fee for design for the senior center for a possible addition. Mm -hmm. uh, how big is the, would the addition be? How much money would the addition be? And we start adding up the numbers and taking them from their silos and start adding them up to include the Lakeville Country Club. You know, if there was a debt exclusion for that and other proposed debt exclusions, I don't think we can afford it, Ari. Um, so I am, I'm just the paid help. No, I know, but I'm saying as a private citizen, not Rodney Dixon, the chair. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is Rodney Dixon, the private citizen. Yeah. I love my town. Uh, I think we got a good tax rate. Our taxes are reasonable. I think if we take a look, and, and this is something we may have to ask FinCom or others to take a look at the budget and see what the the potential debt exclusions are. I know some are coming off. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we will, Ronnie, we will definitely have that for the presentation to town meeting. I've already been, I actually already have a draft version of that very thing that I've been working on the last that, two days. That's awesome. So my so, question, just to keep it simple for people that are not in finance or people that, um, no. uh, the average taxpayer, you, you know, it, the whole spectrum, it would, it would be really helpful if the town could give a dollar amount per year added yep. on the if thens, if we do this, then it would be that, and lay it out in in, in dollars because people's heads, I think, are going to explode if if you know we say, yeah, well, here we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and we're going to do this. That sounds great, but it comes down to money, and it may it may be cost prohibitive. So this is a great minds moment because I can tell you that's exactly the the the, uh, the chart that I'm working on. Exactly, it, it has it shows it shows amount of money and impact on tax bill year by year depending on the 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 uh, the, the things that happen. So it, it, it it's exactly what I'm thinking too. My whole objective in this presentation that I'm preparing for town meeting is to be as transparent as possible to show that to, just the facts that you we got one way or the other. There's a lot of desirability to, 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 to acquiring Lakeville Country Club. The sight lines are significant, are, are significant, especially, and when you consider what it could become for those people who live along there, I totally get the concern. Uh, it's, but it's also true that nothing is in isolation um, and it would be a very difficult situation if we had to, um, if we do debt exclusion to purchase this building, this property, this facility, I'm sorry, this is this property, and then a year later, Propose another debt exclusion to build a new fire station. I am not dumb. I know what that would look like and how that would feel. And I intend to be as upfront about this as I possibly can. What is yeah, and I think this is a con go ahead, Brita. I'll what speak is proposed after. for that? Is it housing? Is it because it's zone business, correct? Um, according to the PNS, and that's all I know. I haven't seen any plans. According to the PNS, um, they're looking to what they do they call it a what do they call it, Mark? Distribution center. Distribution wow. center. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask this question about, about revenue from a distribution center. Uh, more generally speaking, our, we have a flat tax rate right now. There's no difference between residential and business, which is, an, which is attractive to businesses. Mm -hmm. would, would there be any consideration of a tax break for that developer to develop that property? As a distribution center? Yep. Or would they tax come break? in and build the distribution center and start paying taxes? They haven't asked for a tax break. If so they, I, would, yeah. I, would, but if I, they, I don't think so. I, I, would someone like that do that? And I'm, I mean, I don't mean to speculate, but I'm going to speculate. So the only, I'm Is sorry. It possible? Right? Is it possible? The only, it, it, um, the only tools that a locality has available for that sort of thing are things like the STA or the TIF. Um, mm -hmm. And Technically, one could, you can ask for whatever you want. You know, right. I, I used to ask my mom for an extra cookie every you know, after dinner every, but I never got it. You know, right. um, so you, you could ask for what you want. Um, I, I can't imagine a situation where this town would be actively engaged in offering an STA or a TIF on a on a distribution center. I just okay. can't. I can't. I can't. Mark, can you even envision that? 
No, no. And it's it's not a simple process even to set it no. up. So um, no, it's not, you know, I just I just don't don't see that happening, ex especially yeah. given, you know, the impactful nature of the project. Um, I think people right. would not want to be giving up any any residential. I mean, um, any tax revenue that right. we would receive that they would want to get at least the full amount, if not more. So, you know, right. That's good. We don't really we don't really know what kind of tax revenue this development would produce because we haven't seen the site plan and we don't know about the density. We have really know very little about it. Right. Um, you know, you could look at the Loudon Hospital site and that's, you know, supposedly going to generate several hundred thousand dollars in annual tax revenue if that gets developed. So I would imagine this, I believe, is, is a larger site. So I think that there's the opportunity for more. But, but that, that, that's, you know, if someone asks the town meeting, how much ta how is it going to generate taxes? The answer is going to be. Yeah, you don't know. We, we, we don't know. Yeah, we, we really can't say that with any authority at all. And I'm more concerned, too, honestly, growing up here that, you know, that section of town, uh, Clare Pond Road, not, it, that's always been, kind of, you know, a, a nice, well, all of Lakeville is nice, but a, a really nice part of town. And I just can't foresee a distribution center and the traffic that it's going to to dump out mm -hmm. onto Clear Pond Road and potentially 79, which is going to be rebuilt anyway. We just, we're spending a lot of money to rebuild 79. So what are the, you know, if it gets approved, you know, the volume, uh, the wear and tear on a brand new, basically it'd be a brand new road if they if they dump out and go left and go down the 79, you know? So, so there, there are two, two things to say to that. The first is my understanding is that they are acquiring property adjacent to Road 18, so that they can empty onto 18 and avoid Clear Pond Road and and um, yeah, uh, but um, I would also I, I would um, uh, what was your first point, Rodney? The um, uh, just about the impact, uh, you know. So that one was just like the impact, and then the volume. You know, you got that volume right. of, of track. It's going to oh, really be. I remember now. Yeah. Area, it'd be very disruptive. Yeah, I remember what I was going to say now. The the other thing that I think is, that maybe is getting lost in the discussion a little bit is that. This isn't the decision on whether to develop or not. The town, the town has other options besides purchasing to manage the development of the site. And you know, the planning board has, you have the DOD, which makes which you know, makes a special permit a little easier, but the town still has a number of tools at its disposal, the planning board does, to manage this development in such a way that's more um, amenable to the town's priorities. And um, you know, that, that's not really the select board's job, that's the planning board's job. And um, yeah, I think, you know, so at the joint meeting last week, I, th I would say, um, Mark, you can tell me if you think, if you think I'm over going lean too far forward on this, that Mark Knox was pretty definitive that the planning board, if it got, if it got to that point, would be engaged in that process. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is, yeah. you know, a special permit. And so, um, all of the things that a large project like it would also first off have to probably go through the MEPA process, which yeah. because it's such a large project, um, even if it gets scaled down, you know, and it's then it still has to go to the town whereby we can that will will evaluate the impacts as well. So they'll be preparing traffic reports and other evaluations for for both MEPA and for the town. And so um and again, being a special permit, uh, just because they submit a plan of a certain size and a certain layout doesn't necessarily mean that that's the plan that's going to get approved. Um, things can be adjusted, buildings moved, scaled down, increased buffers, improved drainage, um, you know, um, design. Uh, building design, lighting will be clearly a, an issue. Um, uh, you know, and and so on, and and that kind of stuff, and of course the impact to to uh, Bedford Street. So, and what's that going to look like? Um, is there going to be lighting, turn uh, lights, and turning lanes, and uh, and other improvements uh, for Bedford Street? So, Rodney, Rodney, yes, and and Ari, uh, you know, as a member of the planning board, I can tell you that uh, you know Mark is very concerned about this, as we have spent weeks and months and months working on the Lakeville Hospital project. So here we come up on another project of a similar nature. So I think there's some there's, uh, concerns by us all on the planning board, especially Mark, is how we go forward. Going back to some of Ari's comments, 
uh, if you look at it, the warrants here, we're looking at $2.3 million on a new fire truck and the fire station and this and that. Then you add all, then you add, then you tell the, te the, the, the taxpayers, oh, by the way, uh, now we're going to add on 13 or 15 million bucks. Their heads are going to go, wait a minute here. And I guess it comes down to what's important to the town. Do we need a new fire station? Do we need a new fire truck? Do we need new cruisers? Do we need their throats repaired, or do we need another? Do we need a uh, a distribution center or something up in a very very nice residential district? I guess that's what it, I mean. You guys, I mean, Mark and Ari, you guys know better than I do. And Rodney, I mean, I'm just a you know a neophyte in this stuff, but uh, I think that's you know we're going to see some heads spinning here, and uh, I mean. <laughs> It's going to be a. This is going to be something. I guess. I mean, well, we I guess yeah, it's well put. All right. I mean, I, thank we, you very much. We right, so, in the interest of time, I apologize going over my thirty-minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's seven twenty. My apologies <laughs> to all. Um, so, thank you though for uh, for that that explanation and discussion. I think it's very helpful for all. Were we setting a date for the next meeting? Is not where this all started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it did. So, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, it's important, you know. Absolutely. So, anyway, yeah. So, scheduling the next meeting date. Uh, we're talking about June. Um, is that is that amenable to everybody? Sure. Joe, does ConCon meet on the second and fourth Tuesday? Second and fourth. So, do we want to meet on the third, June twenty-first? I guess we could. The third Tuesday. Works for me. June 21st. Sounds good. Okay. In, uh, we're going to be in person. And I'll, try, I'll book the police station way in advance. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. If you, could, if you could book it now, that would be awesome. Yes. And that way, if we could secure it, uh, great. And if we got to go Zoom again, then at least we what can. Time do you, what, what time do you all want to meet? I mean, I'm, I'm willing to meet as early as possible. 6 a.m. No, uh, <laughs> that's pretty early. That's very early. I'm barely up. Um, 6.30? Is, does 6.30 work for everybody? Sure. Sure. Okay, so we'll that's do... PM, some, right? Okay. 6.30 yeah. p.m. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> All right. Very Great. good. Thank you. Confirmed. Uh, is there any new business to discuss hearing none is there any old business to discuss hearing none <laughs> is there any other business that may properly come before the meeting well um ari is going to put on the website that we're looking for a new member yeah absolutely we'll take care okay. of that okay. Right. So for the uh, for those at home, uh, we had a resignation uh, a few months ago. Jim Rogers, we did mention it. Uh, he was the vice chair. Um, so we're down a member at is that a member at large. Is that correct? Yes. So a member at large. So we're actively soliciting uh, volunteers to, uh, you know, to participate in this committee. Yeah. So if you have any questions or concerns, um, obviously, it's going to be posted on the website. If people want to reach out to me, uh, you know, directly, they can. Um, happy to happy to help them. So, all right. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is it okay. second? Second. And all in favor, aye. Rodney Dixon, aye. Rita Gabbard, aye. Chamberlain, aye. Derek Lynch, aye. Ari Sky, aye. Right. Thank you all. Thank Be you. Well. Be safe